of Operation um, ISAF. Uh, a number of uh, um, member countries, a number of uh, presidents and chiefs of governments at the NATO summit in Chicago underpinned in the ISAF meeting towards uh, President Kazai that we really, really um, take very seriously the um, commitment to defending democratic values and human rights. And that message was sent to President Kazai very, very clearly. So as we move along with the transition process, and as we continue supporting the Afghan government through various operational and training efforts, we continue to attach great importance that the Afghan government does its utmost in order to ensure um, the um, application of human rights and of the rule of law. And I should also mention good governance. What we also um, think um, we will do now following the Chicago summit is to um, continue engaging perhaps more than before with Afghanistan neighbors. There was strong agreement among the heads of state and government that is indeed very important to continue engaging both the Central Asian neighbors to Afghanistan as well as Pakistan. And even though the Pakistani government has not yet agreed um, um, or has not yet uh, taken a decision to open the transit lines for our supplies, we were able to secure um, transit agreements with um, a number of the Central Asian countries and neighbors of Afghanistan, which obviously will help uh, NATO allies and other rights partners to also um, withdraw regularly their forces as we move along with the transition process. But apart from the issue of transit lines, I think it was important that the summit reiterated one more time NATO's commitment to engaging in a close political dialogue with uh, both Pakistan as well as with uh, Central Asian uh, countries. The second uh, major issue um, that was addressed in Chicago, and I'm sure you all followed that very well, was um, the discussion to um, the discussion about narrowing down um, the uh, military capability gap on the two sides of the Atlantic and to seek ways to foster transatlantic burden sharing uh, when it comes to military capability. I could also put it a bit differently and said the key subject that was discussed in Chicago was certainly the importance to not allowing today's economic crisis to become tomorrow's security crisis. There was very, very strong agreement uh, around the table in Chicago to uh, what they put forward to the head of the state government, namely a defense package uh, that would describe uh, NATO's military and force evolution to what we call NATO 2020, um, and that we look at the very sound basis for resolving the tension between austerity and security. More precisely, um, the Allies not only endorsed a defense package and a separate declaration on defense, um, a defense package and NATO 2020 forces, but also approved a list of 22 uh, multinational capability projects um, that uh, we have elaborated on under the heading of Smart Defense, which will help allied nations to foster cooperation, multinational planning, multinational uh, acquisition of capabilities uh, as we move along. We will certainly continue working on that because now we will have to also implement uh, the Smart Defense uh, projects and we will continue looking into ways to integrate partners, um, those partners who would like to actually become part of that exercise. Um, but there was, um, just to uh, reiterate my point, or strengthen my point one more time, very strong consensus among the allies uh, that uh, NATO need to remain um, very upbeat uh, when it comes to fostering uh, its efforts to improve capability uh, not only planning, but ultimately also building on the European side as well as on the uh, US side. So, smart defense, NATO 2020, uh, military capabilities, and how we uh, could improve them in the years to come was a very, very important issue. 
Um, last but not least, um, the third issue that uh, was discussed at uh, the Chicago Summit, and I'm sure you also followed that uh, very closely, was Nathan's um, 